Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm going to rack the wine. First, I need to sanitize the containers I'm gonna rack the wine into. If you don't know what racking wine is, Basically what I'm going to do is put this up on the table up there, clear a spot, put that up on the table, and then I have another one of these three gallon carboys in that box right there. I'm going to put a siphon, which is brand new, right here, put a siphon in here, and siphon, you tip the jug on an angle so that you don't pick up all this stuff in the bottom. But I do want some of that stuff so that the malolactic bacteria has something to eat for the next three months or so. At least that's how I understand it. So I have to get, I'm gonna to need to rack this one as well. And I have one gallon growlers in this box here. So I have to get the three gallon and the one gallon as well as the siphon and two new airlocks. I'm gonna take all that stuff and use this star sand. This is what was recommended. It's an acidic sanitizer, and this goes a really long way. So I'm gonna mix up some of that in my three gallon one, get it nice and sanitized, and then I'm gonna sanitize the other stuff with that. Then once that stuff's all sanitized, I'm going to rack it. But I think I need to put this up on the table, clear spot, put it up on the table, and tip it a little bit to get the majority of the lees. And lees are just the spent material at the bottom. They're old yeast cells and stuff like that. Tip this a little bit on its side so I only get some of them. I'll put the siphon down at an angle and let this sit for about an hour. And that'll work out well with this, the French oak chips. These say soak in water one hour before adding. So I'm going to get these soaking and get these tilted. And hopefully the, the sediment will go into the corner there. And then I'll come back in about an hour and start racking this stuff. And while this stuff is settling to the side, I'm going to go out and get this stuff all sanitized. I have the carboy and the jug both tipped on an angle. You can see there's a little bit of lees down in there. And there's a good inch here. It doesn't appear to be moving, but that's okay. I'm going to be putting the siphon at an angle, and I do want to collect some of it. So everything should work. A bunch will be left on this side. Okay, now to get this soaking and to get this stuff cleaned. Oh, I have to clean these too. I think I'm going to use these instead of the, the corks. And what else do I... Oh, I'm going to clean my wine thief as well. All right, let's get at it. All right, I got some water to soak the wood chips in. A bag. This bag, the chips are going to go in the bag, the bag's going to go in the water, they're going to soak for an hour, and then the bag itself is going to go in the freshly cleaned carboy. Oh, you know, I don't have one for the little growlers. Eh, I don't think they need it. All right, let's get some of these oak chips in here and get it soaking. All right, let's see what this bag looks like. Ooh, that's big. All right, well, the instructions I've read, I've read two different things on this. Actually, one of them would have made it uh, most of these, and another one says like a, a quarter ounce or something like that. So I'm just going to play it by ear, and I'm going to add a little less than half. 
they have almost no smell. So this will be kind of interesting. I'm trying to keep everything kind of clean. This is all brand new and I haven't touched anything with it. I know that's not sanitary, but I'm not going to go get the sanitizer and sanitize the bag. I will next year, but for this year, I'm just going to have to hope that it's fairly clean. All right, I'm going to have to weight this down and then we'll get out and sanitize the rest of the stuff. All right, I got the bag soaking, got it weighted down. You can kind of see the color of the water changing. Got my measuring tool and my star sand, and I got everything else out on the back of the gator. So what I'm gonna do is one ounce treats five gallons of water. So it's a little more than three teaspoons. I'm gonna fill this up about halfway, add the star sand to it and shake this up and then I'm going to slowly pour this into this bucket and wash the other stuff off as I do that. That'll sanitize this bucket. So I'm going to get these clean, this growler clean, uh, siphon. We have, well, this is the wine thief. We got siphon and other stuff associated with the siphon and miscellaneous stuff. A lot of this stuff is just going to get stored until next year. So a little over three teaspoons in here. It's really windy out, so hopefully the audio is okay. Three teaspoons, a little over three teaspoons in here, and we're off to the races.
with everything clean, I got to get my oak chips, which have been soaking for an hour, into the bottom of this carboy. I need to add a quarter teaspoon of potassium metabisulfate. I'm going to do that when the wine is about halfway full. And that's about it. So, let me see. My stuff's all in here. I'm going to grab my siphon and get to work. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to dump these in as they are. All right, that's not a big deal. But it's going to make a little bit of a mess. Yeah, definitely more of a mess than I wanted to make right now. The guy at the wine store probably... I don't know, he's probably never used a three gallon carboy. This neck is pretty small on here, so he probably didn't know. You know, he said to use a bag. And then you can reclaim the chips. I mean, but the chips are only two bucks, so. Why bother? Okay, it is siphoning, but I can't tell where the end of that is. Hopefully it's down by the bottom.
Okay, this does not fit through the neck. Seems like you could pull it up to get more length out of it. I don't know why this thing is so short like this. It's just nuts. Look at how little this thing is. Well, about halfway through, well, maybe more than that, this thing only goes yay far. You can see where it gets stuck in the neck. It would probably work on a bigger carboy, but it definitely didn't work on this. So I had to yank this whole thing apart, and then I just used the hose. And it's kind of hard because, you know, the hose wants to curl and stuff. But there is, that's most of the yucky stuff in there so i have my racked wine now i need to add a quarter teaspoon of this potassium metabisulfate then i'll put this cap on it and one of the cleaned bubblers one of the airlocks and then this will be put away to ferment um, there'll be other steps to it and i'll show you when that comes up but for the most part this is going to sit for quite some time now so let's get this potassium metabisulfate in there and get this shook up a bit and then get the airlock back on. Whoops, one more thing. I have to rack this as well. I'm just going to do it with the tube because I don't think that thing's even going to fit through that tiny little neck. So I'm going to rack this into that glass growler and then once I add the potassium sulfate to this, I'm going to top it off and I'll add just a touch of potassium sulfate to that real tiny amount because it needs it. And then I'll get these both on airlocks and then that'll be it for a good amount of time. out of the way. No.
Okay, that's going to wrap it up. I got everything racked. There is some of the gross leaves in the bottom, but not like before. There was a ton in before. Now that is supposed to be the food for the malolactic bacteria that's still in here. And in about three months, I'll rack this again, and then it'll age. Kind of the same thing with this. Uh, one note, when I was siphoning this one, and it spilled all over the place, I got a taste of this stuff, and it tasted really good. So hopefully this turns out to be some good wine. What I'm going to do during this malolactic bacteria fermentation process is I'm going to at least flush this bottle with CO2 once in a while. I don't think I have to do it very often. This is filled up pretty high, so there's not a whole lot of air contacting the wine, and the wood chips are mostly up there. But I do have to stir these once in a while. I believe the guy said twice a week, so I'm going to need, well, then I'll be flushing this twice a week. But I need a stir rod. I th I'm thinking stainless steel. Something like that, so I'm going to have to dig something up. As far as that siphoning goes, because that did not fit the neck, it might work fine with the five-gallon carboys. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to get a, a solid glass rod or maybe plastic that fits beyond the top of this and down into the bottom and another one for the other end. Put two glass rods on this hose here and do it that way. I mean, I can start the siphoning myself. It's not that big of a deal. So it looks like I got to top this off just a bit and then these are going to go somewhere safe. And this is all the stuff that I've got for my winemaking endeavors. I'm going to make a shelf, a special shelf for all this stuff over in the shed. And then I'll be pulling all this stuff out again next year. Next year, I hope to make a little bit more wine, probably maybe two six-gallon ones or two five-gallon ones. I'm not sure. We'll see then. So if you want to see that or any of these other processes or working on drywall or any of this other stuff that's going on here, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.